Matthew chapter 2, from verse 19 to 23. The scripture said what? After Herod died, what happened? Uh-huh. And said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are ah. she got so he got up took the child and his mother and went but that Achilles uh -huh, in place in place in place continue Having been warned in a dream. And he will be called. 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 Will be called. Will be called. I decree over the life of somebody today. Heaven is sending help to protect your destiny. Heaven is sending help to protect your destiny. Heaven is sending help to protect your destiny. The destiny of our children will not be thwarted. The destiny of our family members will not be thwarted. The destiny of anyone that is connected to this altar will not be thwarted. Today, by the message of God, help is on its way. Help is on its way. Help is on its way in the name of Jesus. Listen, last week we were talking about attack on manifestations. Is that not what we said? This week we want to talk about divine protectors. What did I say? Divine protectors. If you check very well, there was one man that this whole business of giving birth to the Savior of the world did not concern. And that man's name was Isu, Joseph. The guy woke up one day and discovered that Mary is what? Is pregnant. That is not his business. That does not concern him. If you say it is God that allowed you to be pregnant the way you said you are pregnant, that is your business between you and God. It's not my business. And truly, it was not his what? His business. But since you have mentioned that it is God, there is no problem. We can, I can package you secretly and do what? And let you go. Then, heaven came down and said, brother, calm down. In this matter, we need your help. Did you hear what I've just said? We need what? When God wants to protect your destiny, he will descend himself. He will come himself. He will send messengers from heaven himself. Said so the, angel, the angel told him, calm down. You see what is happening to the destiny of your, this woman you want to marry? We will need you to represent us here. We will need you to represent us on earth to protect who? To protect the mother and who? And the child. That is how Joseph enter one chance hello enter what one chance you will need this prayer today because if you must become anything heaven must send the representative for you on earth you may not understand it so the scripture now told us that by the time you know all the story that went through until they ran away to where to Egypt so every day Joseph, wake up. It's like saying, God, Alpha, next direction. This one, okay, the mother and the child, take to Egypt, bam, let us go. Every day, Joseph would wake up. His job description is what? Protect the woman, protect the child. He wakes up in the morning, protect the woman, protect the child. I don't know who needs to protect your life. Heaven is sending them to you this week. I know you don't understand. I don't know who needs to protect your business. Heaven will send them this week. I don't know who needs to open his mouth or to do something around you. God will send them to protect you this week. So the scripture said that now 
heaven send another angel. That means he that watches over Israel. He that watches over Israel. He that watches over Israel. So there is an angel that was assigned to that case. When it is time to move, the angel will do what? Appear. Said an, an angel appeared again and said, uh, you have been staying in the land of Egypt. Those who wanted the child to die, they are now what? They are now what? They are now what? They are now what? Permit me to tell you, if you want to survive this year, don't fight a man that is already on the ground of manifestation. Don't go and fight what you don't know. Stay on your lane. The scripture said, said those who want to do it, they are now what? Dead. So they left. But when he came down, he now saw that the son of Herod had succeeded what? His father. Then they said, he looked at it and said, mm -mm, it's not okay. And decided to go where? Go where? And it fulfilled a prophecy. Do you know that if Joseph does not care over the life of Mary and Jesus, he will still say, no, consign me. Doesn't consign me. He will take the child and say, let's go and stay there. Whether they say this is the child that ran away or not, doesn't concern me. But because this work that he is doing was not given by man, it was given by who? By God. So he wakes up in the morning. He has a chance to go and stay where he wants to go and stay. But then he said, for the sake of who? Of the child? For the sake of Mary, who is also carrying this destiny assignment, divine assignment. Let me do what? Let me, let's, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Permit me to tell you something today. That there are those who will meet you in your life after this meeting. Some of them may be there before. But after this meeting, there will be people who will be in your life. You will not know why they love you. You will not know why they care about you. You will just be asking yourself, why is it that when I have a problem, they are the ones that carry... They are the ones that carry... See the way he loves me. See the way he cares for me. Carry my water for Do you understand what we are saying? Why would Joseph allow himself to carry somebody's matter on his head? It was because if this child is not allowed to manifest, things will be scattered. But apart from that, even if things are scattered, Joseph can still be on his own. He can still marry another woman. There is no problem. Some of us have experienced it. We call them divine helpers. I call them today divine protectors. I call them destiny protectors. Why? Because when you look into the matter very carefully, Joseph had no reason to kill himself trying to protect who? To protect Mary and the child. Are you with me up to this point? So you wake up in the morning because God knows you need to finish school. And he knows that he needs that school. He needs that certificate to be able to move you. He wakes up, look for a destiny protector and assign him to your case. Because God knows that if your business goes down, his plan for your life will not be made manifest. And this is the year of manifestation. He will now send somebody that looks into your shop and says, but why is your business going down? And what does he say? Let me help you. Why he is helping you is what you will never understand. Why he is helping you, the only thing you say and you summarize it with is, it's just God. Oh, I don't know why he is helping me. Am I making sense to somebody? See, if you don't understand what I'm saying, you may not see it when it happened to you. That people will rise for you from this day. 
and whatever it is that concerns your life, they will carry it on their head. Not because you are the one that put it there, but because heaven sends them to carry your matter on their head. He says, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not what? I will not keep silent. So even if an enemy comes and tells me, keep silent, I will tell him, I will not keep silent. Why are you talking on his behalf? I am talking on his behalf because for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep silent. A lot of us don't understand this dimension of grace. We don't understand that heaven can send somebody to you. And when God sends that person to you, you will discover anything that concerns you. The person will carry it on their head. When it does not happen to you, you can be castigating others until you get to that point when it happened to you. When something was happening in your life, something was happening in your marriage, and there is somebody who is restless for your sake. I pray for somebody today. People will be restless for you. They will be restless for your children. They will be restless for husbands. They will be restless for your job. In the name of Jesus! See, I want to share the story with you. I've shared it on this altar. Now, when I started the seminary, I had an attack in the night. And that attack was very simple. I got into my room. As I just lay on the bed, it was, this was not sleep. The way I just found myself, whether it is in the dream world or in the trance, and I saw a lady appear and said, you want to become a priest, we will deal with you. By the time I was waking up, one of my uh, classmates screamed from his room and shouted. When we all came out, he said, I saw something. Something passed. I kept quiet. I had a visitor here in my... Then I knew that, well, I don't, what I don't pass, what I don't pass. Then, I was so depressed the whole of that day. We were doing everything we were doing. I was so depressed. I was walking, I'm like, ah, this attack, when will it stop? Even when I have not prayed against Lucifer, Lucifer is still the same person. Make you follow me. Hello? You know, by the time we start saying, let us bind and cast, there are people who are peacemakers. They don't bind, they don't cast. Why? Hello? You know what I'm talking about now? Say, ah, me. Satan. Look my face. Did you hear me say I bind you? I was only praying to my God, telling him to help me. So if it comes to matter of people where they fight you, me. The fact is this, whether you fight him or you don't fight him, as long as you call upon the name of Jesus, you are automatically an enemy. So I was depressed. That night, that evening, I started playing a song. Just, I was just playing. And then I knelt down and I started saying, Father, are you sure we are going to finish this thing that we have started? And I heard a clear message I will never forget. Say, I have placed watchmen on your walls. They will be restless for your sake. Till you finish this journey, they will be restless for your sake. They will be... I, I sat down, I thought I did hear well. I heard that voice again. He said, I have placed watchmen on your walls. They will be restless for your sake. If you find people restless for my sake, nobody today is that. I came to decree over somebody's life this morning. They will be restless for your sake. They will be restless for your sake. Destiny protectors activate them over your life, over your marriage, over everything that concerns you. In the name of Jesus. I have told you I don't pray prayers that have not worked for me. The reason I speak with them with confidence is because this is it. The reason Joseph will not go back to where he knew that he could go back to was because he knew that even if those that wanted the child, to, uh, the child dead are dead, he knew that they left disciples behind. Wicked people always leave their disciples behind. God knows. He knows that they will still come to attack. He knows that their, their poison is still moving. 
going around. It may look as if there is peace, but that is negative peace. They cannot see the war outside, but he knows that these are all repentant, wicked people. They will still try to destroy you. If they find a second chance to strike you, they will still strike you. You have to wake up to that. It's not every I'm sorry you should listen to. Some of them are camouflaged to destroy you. The I'm sorry is because we didn't get him well. Let's wait again. If we say I'm sorry, she will believe that everything is fine. Then we strike again. Whoever is planning that for you, we fail. We fail. We fail. We fail. We fail. In the name of Jesus. Listen. When God is the one that taught you warfare, you cannot be deceived. When God teaches you how to fight battle, you cannot be deceived. You don't follow the words of men. You follow their actions. The scripture says he who knows their secret thoughts can reveal it out. He knows the intent of man. He knows the heart of man. Because he said, the scripture said the heart of a man is desperately wicked. By the time the son of Aaron was taken over, did you think he forgot that there was a child that was supposed to be killed? If he ever hears any announcement again, that that child is still alive, he will do it again. So the scripture told us the destiny protector represented on earth said no. Let us go here to Nazareth. If we stay here, they will still target this child. That means when they ran to Egypt, Joseph had to start looking for another job. He, was, he, he must have resigned from his job. In our present day. Is that not so? Resigned. Relocated. Looking for where to go. When he was coming back, he did not go back to the village. He went back to somewhere. Just to protect the child. Do you know that when the soldiers were looking for the baby, we didn't hear that they actually killed their parents. Did you hear that? No. They just enter. They say, give us space. The person we are looking for is a baby. Let us do what? Kill. Let me tell you something. Your destiny protector is not the target of your enemy. Your destiny protector is not the target of who? Of your enemy. That is why it disturbs you that they were able to take up the stress for your life because of reasons you don't know. Who are you that Jesus should come and die for you? Who are you that while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you? That is, when, that is why we say he's called a destiny protector. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 30 to 33, please. You begin to see that there are times that because you need to manifest, heaven will send somebody to protect your life. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 30. You now begin to realize that wherever you go, when we begin to pray, you will find a helper. You will find a helper. You will find a helper. You will begin to see. Let's read that together. The scripture said what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Source anger fled up. At who? And he said to him, Don't I know that you have sided with the son? To your own and to the shame of that is a father insulting first next verse 31 as long as the son of jesse lives on this earth neither you nor your kingdom will be established now next verse why should he be put to death what has he done jonathan asked his father <laughs> Next verse. Help, hold on. Let's read this verse together very well. One to go. To, 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 to. Then Jonathan knew. Now listen to me. Your divine protector may be found in the house of your enemy. Does it make sense now? Your divine protector, your destiny protector will be found where? 
in the house, in the house, in the house. Can you imagine because somebody who is to be manifested as king, it brought a family crisis. That the father is now insulting his son. Looking at him as the most useless child he has ever had. And then he even proposed to him that, see, don't you know that if this guy is alive, you will never become a king. Is it making sense to somebody this morning? And then the scripture said, what Jonathan was saying is, he will not die. He will not die. Who do you have that can go against their family because of you? Who is, it that, who is it that you have in your life that we go against all odds, no matter the thing, that we say, as far as this person's manifestation is concerned, I will not back out. You may think it is easier until you are saying you are one in spirit and discover that everybody has left you behind. They are not one in spirit with you. Am I making sense? You may be thinking you have backup until you turn back and discover that you don't have any backup. You may be thinking that, no, I divided money for them. They were friends. We sat down together. Until you get to that point, when you look back, the person you think will stand for you told you what? You know, concern me. In this matter, it doesn't concern me. The scripture said that Jonathan stood up to his father to ask him, why do you want to kill the guy? Sometimes in life, your destiny helper, this your destiny protector, will be against even his own wife, his own husband, will be against his own father, will be against their mother. Have you not seen men who stand up and fight against their own family member, tell their mother, walk out of my house, stop disturbing my wife. And the mother is saying, Nami born you, Nami, say, even if now you born me, concerning the matters that concerns this woman I marry, get out. Fathers will gather their sons and say, I've disowned you. Say, I don't care. But as long as this person's life is concerned, I will not bow to you. Are you seeing it now? If it has not worked for me or is not working for me, I will not be telling you. I have seen it work in every town, in every city, in every village, wherever I enter. He told me from the very first day I started this journey, I will make men restless for your sake. And I'll pray it over your life again. I pray, I don't care whether your destiny protector is in the house of your enemy. God will give them strength to fight for you. God will give them strength to fight for you. God will give them strength to fight for you. In the name of Jesus. Is it making sense to you now? So you will see that what the father was fighting is different. When he spoke righteously to his son and said that you see, ah, you will not become king. Jonathan did not care. When your destiny protectors appear, they will not care about what they have been offered. What they care about is your manifestation. Do you know that it was because of this act that even the lineage of Saul was spared? You remember we dealt with this scripture in the God of Jacob. And the scripture now told her that there was Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan. When it was time to reward, the scripture now told us that he said, is there no one in the house of Saul? And they said, there is one. But now he's crippled. He said, bring him here. He will sit with me at table. He will eat with me. And then you, you must farm all the lands that belongs to them and give it to him. Why? Because his father stood for a man of manifestation. Because his father stood for a man he knew this is it. Sometimes in life, the only thing that will save your generation may be the one person that carried a grace that is close to you. Do you know I look at Lot sometimes. The scripture said that God has said to Abraham, say, see, I will curse those who do what? You know that scripture? I will bless those who do what? Do you know that if I was Lot and I knew that, every morning when I wake up, I would just be telling Abraham, Shaman, your face show, your shoes shine. If that is the only thing I will be doing, I will be shouting, Shaman, your face show, your shoes shine. If I wake up, grace, 
more anointing. Why? Because I know that my life and the things I am receiving is tied to him at that minute. It's not everybody you separate from that it will be well with you. Some of them are called umbrellas over your life. It's not everything you wake up and you say, gara, gara, I don't care. And you will care when you discover that nothing is working for you. When he got into the trouble, what happened? It was still Abraham that did what? That ran to go and fight. Got into another one. He did not even know that there was trouble coming. It was Abraham that started begging God. How far? How far? How far? Sometimes what you don't understand is that there are people God brought into your life to serve as umbrella to cover you. You don't have the grace. You don't have the anointing. You don't have the protection. Cut away from them. Something else will happen to you. I decree over the life of somebody today. Your umbrella will not be taken away from you. Whoever is supposed to be a part of your life will not be taken away from you. May the mercy of God keep them in the name of Jesus. Destiny protect us. Is it making sense to somebody? That when it comes to destiny protect us, these are matters you will hold God tight today. On earth, who have you sent for me? On earth, who is it that is supposed to be part of my life? Saul kept fighting. He thought he was fighting. Sometimes you are fighting what is bigger than you. You are fighting what is bigger than you. Is it not shameful that you just wake up and it is your daughter that is telling you, Mama, that thing you are saying about that person is wrong. I have seen children go against their parents because they were gossiping. Say, I, I, Father, I told her that, that. Why are you against that person? It's wrong. And I keep quiet and say, when your daughter starts telling you that it's wrong, you that is an adult, you know that you are missing something. They were supposed to learn from you. They are now correcting you. It means that your adulthood is getting a problem right now. You are no longer relevant to that child. So as the child is looking at you, they are seeing my mother every time against, every time talking, every time doing this, and they are saying this. I, a practical experience. One called me and told me, ah, but I had to tell my mother, ah, why are you always talking about this person? I said, ah, your adulthood is having a problem. Jonathan told his father, why do you want to kill him? Why? What did he do to you? If they ask, what did he do to you? He said, I want you to become king. So if you want me to become king, you have to kill him. Abby, when it comes to destiny protector, they don't listen. Their mind is focused on the vision of God. Why? God carries your matter and puts it on their head. Somebody will experience it. Somebody will get it. Somebody will experience it. Somebody will get it. If it is working for me, let it begin to work for you. If it is working for my life, let it begin to work for you. Concerning the matters of your school, concerning the matters of your business, concerning the matters of your marriage, concerning the matters of your future, somebody will do that in the name of Jesus. Do you understand what the matter? The scripture told us in Luke chapter 10 about the good Samaritan. You remember the story? The man had no reason, no reason to stop his journey. But in verse 33, we were told that the man stopped by when he saw a man that was lying down. What the scripture say? Say, but as a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. I decree over your life this morning. Somebody will pity you. Somebody will pity your family. Somebody will pity your children. Somebody will pity you at school. Somebody will pity your children. Somebody will pity your husband. Somebody will pity your business. In the name of Jesus. Do you understand these things? Said he took pity on him. And they were one. Ah, the man stopped his journey, stopped his travel. Why? Do you know? You know very well historically, these Samaritans and the Jews, they are not friends. I am telling you again this year that the, 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 the manifestation that God is going to do in your life is that you're, you're in the house of your enemies, your supporters will be strong. In the house of your enemy, he will raise somebody. And we said, this is what we are going to do. Am I making sense? Sometimes, you don't know what we're, what, what we're saying. 
You remember one of our brothers' family was kidnapped? Uh, was it two years ago? And he said something I never forgot. He said, when they went out, the guy that remained said, okay, I just need two million. Every time they, 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 they are eating all the money and whatever, bring two million and I will free these children. And that was how they were freed. Let me tell you, in the house of your enemy, I repeat again, in the house of your enemy, I repeat again, destiny protectors will arise. It will begin to move. It will walk. The steadfastness of the Lord. Are you sure?